Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the first uh, opening bell over here. At this uh, it's a new site to me. I'm sure plenty of you already belong to it, Aaron Romer, uh, but uh, new to me. And maybe there's some YouTube people that follow me over here. Uh, for those of you who don't know it, I do have a YouTube channel, uh, but I'm primarily, you know, I'm just going to put a couple videos maybe a week on there. But most of what I'm going to be doing, any teaching and everything, will be here on this side with the opening bell. And I'll also have the um, the Trader's Lounge. Now, Trader's Lounge, if you're new to that, sort of like a trading room, I'll have those on Monday and Thursday at 1 o'clock Central. And what we'll do there is we'll look at trades for the day. A lot of times I like to put my trades on, like non-directional trades, calendars, flies, whatever you're doing, uh, later in the day, like maybe the last couple hours. So that's a good time to meet. So 1 o'clock uh central we'll have that today and then again on thursday uh and what we'll do i'll go over trades that i'm looking at and how i would manage them uh of course we could have a discussion however you want to do it uh, and um uh, so that's kind of the basic format here you'll kind of i'm kind of getting used to working over here i'm used to a zoom meeting room uh but i'm still learning the process over here so bear with me and uh i'm going to Kind of run through what I normally do in an opening bell. And uh, if you guys have questions along the way, certainly you can put them in the chat. Um, yeah, I mean, if you if you want to connect audio, I, I suppose you can. Where I where I did these before, we used a webinar uh, format for these, and uh, you use chat. There wasn't a connect audio, but I don't I don't have a problem with it. Uh, but um, so put it over there in chat or connect, and then we can. Uh, get going now. I would ask that if you happen to connect audio, make sure you're muted if you're not talking. Sometimes background noise can get kind of troubling to folks in the room. Uh, I see Tom's here. Tom, I did hit the record to the cloud. I hope that was the right thing to do. <laughs> hey, Mark, I'm just checking in to make sure everything's going smoothly for you. And I can make these webinars if you like. Um, it's up to you. It's, no, uh, I, I, I don't mind know. that they're meetings. I'm just learning the format. I, I suppose that most of the trading rooms here does everybody get on and talk over or do they use the chat yeah. i wasn't even sure what your format was yeah most people do meetings uh we do the webinars for the the weekly presentations the round tables but uh it's flexible i mean there's no nothing fixed and hard in stone or anything okay all right and well, the record to the cloud is perfect and i'll get the recording posted later today for everyone okay all right well, right, I got to go run another meeting, but I just wanted to make sure you were recording. Everything was going smoothly. Yes, yes. Thank you, Tom. And I want to talk to you later today. I'll get with you after your uh, meeting. <laughs> okay, perfect. Uh, have a great meeting. And uh, again, welcome to Aramir, Mark. It's really great to be working with you again. Well, thank you very much for having me. Yes, Tom and I worked together at Sheridan way back. Uh, and I think, would you leave Tom 2020? Well, I left there. in November 2013 and I was there six and a half years. So <laughs> it's been a long time. Yeah, it's been a long time. And we uh so we we knew each other well and uh he reached out to me pretty quick when uh, he found out about me leaving at Sheridan. So I think I can fit in over here pretty well. I just need to get used to the structure, but I think you guys are gonna like what I bring here. Uh I do this opening bell Monday through Friday. We'll be here at eight. Now, if the markets close like next Monday, obviously we won't be doing it. But all right, so I'm going to get started with what I normally would do uh, and just ask questions, whatever, along the way is fine. So, all right, we'll see you, Mark. All righty, bye-bye. So we can see overnight, of course, the futures are basically flat. Of course, we've been in a crazy up run. Uh, what I like to do on a Monday, too, is I like to look at, you should be seeing the economic calendar, market watch economic calendar on your screen. I know there's a lot of different ones, uh, but this is the one I primarily use just to kind of go over with folks, news that's coming our way that may affect trading. Uh, most of the time, very rarely would I see a news event coming that would make me not say trade a calendar or a fly or whatever. Uh, and over time, I'm gonna get, get into what I look for to enter those trades too. Uh, but to, I do like to know, hey, can I expect big movement? Like tomorrow morning, uh, an hour before the market opens, we're gonna have the CPI. Now the CPI, uh, is, a, of course, an inflation number. It can really move things around uh, because this market is pretty much driven, uh, as they call it, zombie, zombification uh, by cheap money. Uh, 
that's really what it's about now. That's what drives the market more than anything. It appears to me fundamentals or whatever. Um, so whenever you get anything to do with inflation and the Fed and uh, the market's going to take a really hard look at that, right? And, and make their own interpretation. Now, sometimes I, you know, they get ahead of themselves, interpret things wrong or whatever. Uh, but uh, just expect something could happen. The same thing with the PPI uh, over here uh, on uh, Friday. So I wanted to talk a little bit about my history here real quick, too. And then I'm going to get on to the trades. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, uh, I was a mentor since 2008 uh, over at Sheridan. And uh, I've been trading, you know, the I call it non-directional style where you do spreads. They can have up or down movement, counters, flies, iron condors, what have you, diagonals. Since uh, about 2004, I've been and I've traded futures, commodities, all those things. I've been trading really since about 1998. And uh, at the time I was doing that, I was a paramedic. I was a paramedic for 23 years. And um, the towards the end of my career, which that was, I retired in 08. Uh, I was able to put myself at a station house uh, with my seniority where I ran very few calls during the day. So, and I worked 24 hour shifts. So you were, um, you were only working nine or 10 days a month total. And uh, some of those were weekends. So basically speaking, I traded full time because I was, I, I was at work, but uh, I could be on the internet and ran very few calls during the day. So I've really been full time trading since probably early 2000s. And then um, I, I got into this in 05, this more into more than directional. I still do directional, certainly understand it more than directional. I, I started doing these calendars, flies, diagonals, condors, and uh, it really took off for me and worked well for me. And so well for me that I ended up retiring and becoming a full-time trader in 08 and in a mentor also, people might ask, well, why would you mentor? Well, you're here looking at the market anyway. So I don't mind doing it. I mean, I enjoy talking about the market, looking at the market. So if you're already here, why not do that if you have something to offer people? And over the years, I've educated a lot of folks who've really uh, beefed up their trading uh, with a lot of one-on-one -on -one mentoring, also these group classes. Um the one-on-one -on -one mentoring, by the way, if anybody in the room ever wants that, you can just email me directly. Uh, I'm going to, hold on a minute, I want to put a couple things here uh, in the chat. First off, you can always email, I think you can email me through the site, to this site too, but if, and it's also on my YouTube, which I'm going to put on here, but this is my email address. I'm going to put it here, and um, so you can always email me anytime if you want to talk about anything, including one-on-one -on -one mentoring. I do that. Uh, I'll set that up with you personally if we do that. And I also want to give you the link here to my YouTube channel. And um, there, like I said earlier, I put up a couple, couple of videos a week. I've been doing one a week generally. I did some live ones last week. I didn't really care much for how live works, which is, one of the primary drivers also of me getting over to this site because this is great and seamless and basically what I was doing before, log into Zoom meeting and, uh, you know, away we go. But um, so you can um, look at those videos too. Uh, this first week, of course, the Traders Lounge and this opening bell are, are free uh, starting next, will be next Tuesday because we won't do anything on Monday, the market's closed. Starting next Tuesday, it will be paid. If you if you join by the end of the month, it's fifty dollars a month, or I'll even do it's even on the link there five hundred a year. Uh, after March first, if you joined, it would be uh, seventy five dollars a month. And the first six months though is fifty dollars a month if you if you join uh, by the end of February. So I wanted to acquaint you guys with all that business end of stuff there and what I'm doing. I'm also probably in the next day or two, maybe even today, I'm going to look at starting a trade service, uh, texting. You know, I know they do that here on this side already, uh, where I'll just text you out, hey, I'm getting into this trade. Here's what I'm doing. I'm adjusting this trade, which is what I call if you have to repair it in some way, because maybe you're in a counter and it ran against you too far. Uh, I'm going to, I'm doing it now. So you'll get up to the date up to the minute things of what I'm actually doing. I did this here. I bought this here. I sold this here. And uh, 
I think that'll be very helpful. That'll be a separate a service that you can subscribe to if that's something that you like. I have a lot of people, uh, we didn't do that where I worked before. I had a lot of people ask, uh, and I'm really happy to be somewhere I can do that because I've had a lot of people ask me, Did, hey, just send out, what can I do to just get your trades? And, and I can definitely do that. I'll be doing, probably have a service set up by the end of the week and I'll be talking more about that. Um, I'm also going to do some uh, like hour, hour and a half long recording classes also on the type of trades I like to do and really dial into some nuts and bolts of the trades. However, at the trading lounge too, I will also talk about how I manage trades, that type of thing. All right. So on to the business of things. Whenever I um, trade, primarily uh, I do uh, whatever the volatility range is telling me uh, that would be best in this range. Long volatility, short volatility, some and a mixture. Many, many times you'll be doing a mixture. Um, and I'm not a big charts guy. I do understand charts. I used to use them a lot. I do um, look at support and resistance. Uh, I'm not a big guy for technicals. I mainly let the decisions on what I'm going to be doing just be dictated by the VIX primarily. And, and as you can see, the VIX here, this is just a three-year range, but it's in a very low, low, low range, probably since, you know, even before COVID or whatever, we're in a very low range on the VIX now at 13 and change. So this is why I've been showing a lot on my YouTube channel, and I'm going to talk about it here too. I've been doing a lot of calendars and diagonals, which are long Vega trades. Now, if you're in, if you're not understanding what long Vega trades are, I'm gonna, in, in the traders lounge. I'm going to break that down more for new people, so you understand what I mean when I say long or short Vega. Vega, of course, means volatility, and um, some trades benefit from it more than others. Some some trades benefit from the volatility in the market going up, and some trades benefit from going down. And a lot of the trades I do, uh, it can do a little bit of either, and it doesn't have that much of an effect, but it's something that you need to be aware of. Uh, to that end, I've been showing something over here, and I'll, I'll do something up to date here too. But um, I did have this in here, I'll just touch on it. Whenever the volatility is this so low, if you're a speculatory trader, one of the things I like to do is go out about a month and buy a VIX call vertical. Uh, sometimes, you know, we're really high. If I think the VIX is going to go down, I'll buy a put vertical. I have tried doing other things besides verticals, like flies and even calendars in the VIX. I've never been, and other volatility products, by the way, but I've never really been able to get it to work right. I think it has something to do with the volatility and the way it trades itself in the VIX. So I stick with verticals. You could outright buy calls or buy puts. The reason I do verticals, well, the reason anybody does verticals, is it makes your trade cheaper, right? Because you're going to sell something on the other side of it. So you would buy the 14 or this is just an example. Could you buy the 15 and sell the 20 here? You absolutely could. I'm just showing you one example. Just remember, whenever you buy a vertical, the, the wider it is, meaning between the long and the short you sold, well, the more room you have for it to work, the more money you can make. But it also costs you more because what you're selling isn't making you as much money. So you see here, I have this 14 and I sell the 17, it's 60 cents or $66 in, in option language. But if I did a five point wide, it's 85. And if you went wider, it's even more, but uh, you can make uh, more money, of course. Now that's the thing with a vertical. If you outright buy a call, you can make money, well, to the moon. Uh, but uh, if you do a vertical, Ultimately, of course, your gains would be capped by wherever you sold the short behind it. Um, in this case, if you paid 66 bucks for this here, uh, you can make, uh, ultimately, the most you could make would be a little over $200. You can see that here. Oh, and I do use, as you're noticing, I don't know, how many of you folks use the, um, the uh, TD Ameritrade or, or what other things are you guys using? to trade. I wasn't really sure uh, what, what a lot of people use here. I use TD Ameritrade. I live in this analysis screen. Of course, I started out with it being think or swim. Okay. Yeah. And uh, really, I'd be in tough shape. If I didn't have this think or swim, I'd have to go buy a third party software. 
Yeah, a lot of tasty trade folks. But I would have to go out and buy a third party software if I didn't have this. But I use this analysis screen for everything, you know, cal you know, figuring out what trades I want to do, managing the trades, all these things. Just a quick primer. Whenever you look at this, the blue line up here is your expiration. And this purple line would be we're at whatever day you're on and just basically saying, hey, if, if we went up to 15 today and you had this on, you'd be up 37 bucks, which would be of course over 50 percent if that was true. Now, remember, this is a, a this is a little bit theoretical. I think it tracks pretty true most of the time, uh, but not always. Oh, OK, man, we've got a lot of different folks using different things here. All right. So. That's just a, a directional idea, something I like since I was passing through here. I mentioned it, and I think it's a fine trade to put on today also. Now, over on the SPX, which is primarily what I trade, I've traded all kinds of stocks. I've traded the RUD. I've traded a lot of futures, uh, even with flies and stuff like that and oil and that. But I've mainly, I'd say over the last couple of years, have dialed myself into just doing the SPX primarily. But uh, and then I show that in spice sometimes for folks that have a smaller account or just want to start out smaller. Um, so most of what you may see from me, you can always ask for other products. I'll take a look at them. Uh, but I'll be showing you my trade ideas will primarily be in the SPX. Uh, because I like it better than individual stocks. Some of the really big Individual stocks can trade pretty well with these strategies like an Apple or an Amazon. But of course, individual stocks have individual stock risk, uh, which I, I like to stay away from because, yes, the SBX has news event risk, of course. But an individual stock has news event risk. It has, uh, uh, you know, what happens to the CEO of <laughs> type of risk, uh, products, uh, product launches, all these things. So you'd really, if you're going to trade a, a stock, you really should be well versed in in what it does and when it puts out things. Like Apple, you know, has these new product launches that can really move it. And uh, most stocks primarily, they probably move most of the time that they're going to move. Most of the bigger moves are probably around their earnings. So you need to know when those are. You need to be aware of when dividends are paid. So there's a lot of things to know. So if you're going to do these strategies in a stock you need to, or in future, you need, need to know that particular product really well, which is what I've dealt with SPX. I'm pretty comfortable with it. it you know, it's mainly news driven, probably more than anything. Uh, then, you know, sometimes during earnings, you can get some movements, but a lot of what happens now with the SPX is all, hey, the Fed, a Fed speaker said this, it was hawkish or dovish. And are they, you know, whenever they make a rate announcement, and talk about what they're going to do going forward, those type of things. But what you're seeing here on the screen is a model trade. Uh, it's a trade I I um, actually did on my YouTube channel where last Tuesday, I, I, I covered this in the video on there too. Last Tuesday, I got into this. And what I did, we were around 49.50. And I put this below the market because over the last several months, there's been this skewed to the upside in call calendars that you're really down very little for a long time on the upside. Uh, really, really leans up, which has been great in this market because a lot of the moves have been up. Uh, but when a trade gets to a certain point, gets up here where I'm running out of room, that's when I make what I call an adjustment. So if I'm up here and uh, I, I need more room, I want to give this trade more room to roam. So in this case, I just ran up here, uh, I think it was about points, and I added, uh, on Thursday, I added this 50-20 calendar. Now, uh, these trades can, you know what, I think these were, I did this in calls, I'm not sure what happened here. But anyway, you can do these in calls or puts, I'm going to show you one today in calls because I like the way those look. But the idea with this is you're saying, hey, market, you can go up a little more. I'm just going to try to give you more time for what? This theta to, to come my way. All of my trades uh, are theta positive, meaning every day money comes into your account just from time decay. Now, sometimes you might say, hey, Mark, this is $51. And I've been two days. And by the way, every day this number will get a little larger because the closer an option gets to expiration, the faster it decays. And an option doesn't, 
expire in a linear fashion. It's more, uh, it's accelerates, gets war, you know, just boom, boom, boom. If you ever look at expiration week in an option trade, it really takes off and it's time decay. And there's some risk associated with that too. Of course, you have your gamma and everything get a little larger there where movements can really hurt you. Another thing I want to point out if you're new to sink or swim, uh, about 10 to 15 minutes or 15 to 20 minutes before the market opens, you'll often see these graphs go crazy. Absolutely nuts. You're going, wait, hey, I'm up at $1,100. You know, you're really not, right? Yeah, it'll show that, or it might even show you down that amount of money. Uh, I, I remember one time and during, um, I think it was during the 08 crisis, you know, and there was all kinds of volatility and I had on an iron butterfly. Now the most I could have lost is what I ended up, paying for it, which was $3,500. Well, one time pre-market, it said it was down three and a half million dollars, you know, in this trade. Believe me, when you first see it and you're not aware that's what's going on, you, you do check your math. <laughs> but I knew that wasn't possible. Uh, and of course, it ended up straightening itself out when the market opened. But just remember that you can get, you can't get your most accurate grass outside of market hours usually with sink or swim TD Ameritrade. And now this, uh, one thing I like about this, and I like about the uh, the graphs here over in TD Ameritrade, as opposed to say Tasty Trade, which has nice graphs, these are dynamic here where they will move around all day long um, with the market. If volatility goes up or down, that can make, for instance, a calendar just go uh, go up, go down because volatility affects it. And uh as best I can tell, in a tasty trade, they don't seem to be dynamic like that. You're not getting quite as a, an up-to-date uh, situation. But let me show you a trade that I think I would be looking at today. And now you could do this a couple different ways. What I would probably do is go out to a week from Friday. Most of the time when I do calendars, I keep them a little shorter term, a week or two, or diagonals. That's a long Vega trade. If I'm going to do a butterfly, then I'll normally do those with two, three, four weeks or my very popular uh, trade, probably the most successful fly strategy I've ever had over in my life and my career is what I call the all put flat fly. Now those I do 35 days and up. I've had people do them a lot more. I've done them 50 and 60 days and, and I'll be talking about one of those too, uh, really dialing into all the things that go in with that too. That's a lot uh, of knowledge to take in if you're not familiar with it. Sometimes in option trading in general, it is a little like drinking water through a fire hose, right? It's all coming out you too fast, but you'll get there. So if I was going to do a calendar today, which I like the idea, I usually do calendars. I start thinking about them anytime we're under 20 on the VIX. That's what I look at. If we're under 20 on the VIX, I'll normally at least consider calendars. Now, I may do flies too at the same time, but I consider calendars. And when we get under 15, I'm really liking calendars. And whenever we get to um, usually in the 13s or 12 and lower for sure, that's pretty much all I do because they work so well in that low volatility environment. Um, and you don't have to fear if we're already down at 12 or 13 something on the VIX, the likelihood of the VIX going a lot lower in a fast way, which could hurt your calendars, is very slim. But what I would do if we were, let me use the close from Friday as an example. Of course, we're going to be, we're going to be pretty close to that, it looks like. Um, 5026. So if we were 5026 a little later on today, what I would do is probably go to about 5010. Let's take a look at that. And I'm going to show you what a call calendar would look like here. Whoops. <laughs> All right. Let me analyze it. I love to analyze things before I ever do them. That's for sure. So let's take a look at the risk profile up here. So what do we have here? We have the now this. Oh, I have to unlock the price. You know, usually if you're getting something funny looking up here, it's because the price is, is uh locked. Oh, by the way, the lower volatility is the wider I'll get between what I sell and what I buy. So if we were 17 or 18 on the VIX, I might do a th three days between the short and the long. But in this case, what I've been doing lately is four days, sometimes five, but you, you could do four or five days. 
I think wide here. Um, and what do you get for that? Well, the wider that your calendar is between the short and the long, the usually, of course, it's going to be the more it costs, right? Because you bought a long that's even further out. And another thing, you'll, you usually get a little faster theta in a calendar uh, that has the long further away from the short that say four days away, even then three. And that's because the primary way a calendar works is that your the time decay of this option on the 23rd is a lot faster than the time decay of this option here on the 27th. And if this option was the 29th, then it would be this, the 29th would be even slower and you'd get even faster time decay because the rate of decay between them would be greater. Um, and also, the further you are between your short and your long, your vega, this volatility number will be larger. And what that means is the volatility works for you, meaning that the long's volatility stays better or goes higher than the short, the short's own individual volatility, then that would be good for you. But if, to say, the short has a higher volatility and outperforms going higher in the volatility than the long, that could be negative for you. So those are things to consider. Now I'll break these down more over time and particularly in the trader's lounge. I won't always, once we get up and running and get a core going, we won't always have to be, you know, as basic as I'm doing right here. I, I mean, uh, I know for some of you, you already know this, you've been Mark, you're killing me. I already knew all this. Well, you have to realize other people are in the room and you, you know, I'm trying to help those folks too. And uh, we're all in this boat together, right? And if you have questions, say something, you know, like, you know, Mark, I, I'm not getting it. Can you go over that one more time or whatever it is? Um, so a calendar trade like this, I think it looks pretty good. And the reason I put it on below where we're trading is because look how it's flatter up here to the upside. And, and in my opinion, it, if we don't stall out here, we'll probably encounter resistance again at 50-50. And uh, it would be my guess. Uh, I don't think we're going to shoot from here right up to 5,100 without some sort of, you know, back and, you know, and fill type of thing, slowing down, maybe a little trouble. Usually, I mean, there's all different support and resistance in the market. What you'll find a lot of times, though, these big numbers, when you get to 5,000, and if we look over here at this chart, you can see that we banged around a little bit there before we got up there. This is several days here. So when you get in here at 4,800, look how we did that. You bang around, you bang around a little bit. And then you, if you're going to, you might punch through or it might even go back down from there. So the next thing is usually around the 20. So like if we get through 5,000, 50, 20, we'll have a little bit of a holdup. And we did that 50, 50. And then probably if we get through 50, 50, it might be that we go up to 5,100. That's how I usually... Uh, see things go, it seems. Now, technicals, obviously, uh, anything can happen, right? Just because things, uh, the markets, uh, there are charts telling you something, it's not always right, of course. All right, so I'm going to cover your question here, Bill. Bill asks, what's my profit objective? So what I would do with this trade and uh, is I normally go for 8 to 10% of whatever I paid for it. So and this is just a one contractor here. So if you did a one contract one like this and you got in for 345, which is the mid price. And by the way, the mid price uh, here at Thinkorswim, and I believe they do that at Tasty Trade, correct me if I'm wrong. That's what you're trying to get at usually. The mid price is halfway between the bid or what they want to uh, buy things from you for and the ask what they want you to pay them for. So you're trying, when you go in at the mid, you're already negotiating. They don't have to fill you at the mid. Uh, you know, market makers are obligated to fill you at the bid or the ask in a certain volume, but they do not have to fill you at the mid. So if the mid's 345, uh, could I pay? What if it won't fill me, Mark? What do I do? Well, I give it a few minutes and I might go to 350. And then I might give it a few minutes more. And if you want to go to 355. Uh, the most I'll ever usually go above the mid to get into something would be about 20 cents. Yeah, that is wrong, Angelo. It's not going to work out that you can't lose on the upside, but they are skewing a lot higher where you're not in trouble as fast 
over the last several months. I believe it's how the volatilities are in the market because we're really up here at these all-time highs, a lot of tension, and I think that's what's causing that. But we can benefit from that, which is why I like to call calendars here because I think, you know, the thing you have to worry about here, of course, is more upside, but you have to be aware, right, what happens. Nothing goes up forever, and sooner or later here, could be today, could be tomorrow. I think it'll be soon, probably in the next week or two. I think we'll have a meaningful pullback, maybe even go under 5,000, 5, maybe even get to 4950. We'll see. Uh, but with this, I put this trade on, and then what I would do is try to get 8 or 10% of what I paid for it. So let's say I get in here. I'm going to make it easy. What if I get in here at 520 Well, obviously, 10% of that is $52, and uh, maybe you had some fees, whatever you want to calculate those in. So I might try to get it out uh, for a $60 profit, right? $520, 52 $60 profit, and then you could take it off, cover your fees, Get yourself 10% in that example. And once you get this trade on, say you put it on at 520, you can put in a good till cancel order for that number. Uh, now, it is per contract. You're doing 10 of these. Obviously, you're still looking for that 60 per contract. And if you break it down, if I have on one of these or I had on 100 of these, how could I know I made $60 per contract or 10%? Well, if I paid 520, I would just sell it for 580. And that's how I would do it. And that is what I would do to get into a calendar, what my profit goals would be. Now, let's talk a little bit about a butterfly. And we can come back to the calendar, too, if you have questions. So in a butterfly, like I said here at the top, if you missed it, I like to go out a little further, usually three weeks or more in a fly, particularly if you're going to do a fly, whenever we're below 15 on the VIX, so here we are, what are we in the 13s? Yeah. Um, the risk is, what's the risk when volatility is low? Your biggest risk would be what? Volatility going higher. And a, count, and a fly is short, Vega. Now, in, in my experience, a fly is more probably movement dependent than volatility, but it's still something to be aware of. So March 1st is 18 days. I'd really like to be out a little further. So I might go out to, say, March 8th. Oh, by the way, when I put on my non-directional trades like this, my, I'm usually using a Friday. So I'm going to sell the Friday in a calendar. I'm going to buy a Friday and fly. And there just seem to be the most liquid. Uh, so that's why I use Fridays for my trades. Uh, so if I go out here to the 25th, and if I wanted to put on a fly here, we're trading at 5026. And you could really do something similar. Could you do 50-30 as your center? You could. 50-25, yes, you can. I'm just letting this go up here. But let's look and see what happens if I just do a fly at 50-20. And it could be calls or puts, by the way. The SPX is cast settled, so you don't have to get hung up on whether something's a call or a put in the SPX like you would, say, in a stock. Did I not just hit analyze? I thought I did. I did. Good. All right. So uh, with this trade, if I if I had 50-20 as a center, a lot of times what I look to do is do asymmetrical flies, meaning that the long is going to be closer on one side than the other. So I go up 60, down 70. How'd you get that number, Mark? Well, kind of experience, to be honest with you. I, I found that that works pretty well. Well, what is it about width? Well, width... For one, the wider a trade is, the wider this flies, if I went up 100 and down 100, the more it's going to cost. And also, the more room you'd have for the trade to work. But this particular trade, if you went up 60, down 70, let's look and see what we got. You go, okay, I got a pretty good range here. Once again, I'm going to 8 to 10% of what I pay for it would be my profit goal. And then if I get up in here, I'm going to have to adjust it or down in here. So what I do often with these is I'll look and go, okay, how much am I down if I ran up there today? Well, 50 something dollars. And if I ran down here, oh, well, I'm down about a hundred bucks. All right. You said, I'm, you know, what can I do, Mark? I am worried about that pullback, which I think is reasonable and probably smart if you are. Can I have a little more support to the downside? Well, what you could do is you could go up 65 and down 70. Now, when I do that, 
I'm down more at the upside, right? You, nothing's free. It's like a teeter totter. If you're going down, you're on one end, you're going up on the other, usually in, in this setup. So if I go to that upside break, even I'm down a hundred bucks, that's not the end of the world. You can still adjust and be all right. But if I go to that lower break, even I'm only down about $35 and that, you know, when you're down less money at, at the edges of a trade and you know, you need to do a repair strategy, it's a lot less, a lot less adrenaline and a lot less tense for you if you're not down as much. Right. So if you're worried about that downside, this would be treat you a little more kindly if you went up 65 down 70. And then uh, I'll just talk, I'll just touch on balance flies. A balance fly, you can make money even if it goes up, but it is primarily a really, really bearish leaning trade. So if I wanted to be really bearish here, because I'm I'm really afraid we're going down, but I want to acknowledge some upside. Now, you know, I, I could live with. So what you could do there is you could go up 60, down 60, or up 70, down 70, what we call a balanced or symmetrical fly. Now, what happens with that is you're down even more money if it goes up to the upside. But look at the downside. I'm actually up money. You're starting out with these negative deltas. Now, if you look at a negative delta, it tells you, a delta in general tells you where, where's my PL going to go in the next point of movement. So if the delta is negative 291, it's saying, hey, if we go down one point in price, you should be, your PL should be down about three bucks. If we went up, Oh, sorry. If we went down three, but it's negative, I got that backwards. This is negative. You would be up to three dollars, right? Because it's just like your short stock. So if your short deltas and it goes down, that makes you money. If your short deltas and it goes up, well, you can lose money. This isn't the end of the world up here. We can always fix it. You know, if we get this on and we're wrong, right? We're wrong and it keeps going up. Okay, we'll add something up here and give it more room, like we do with the calendar I showed at the beginning. Uh, but I primarily do these asymmetrical flies, but I do sometimes uh, do the balanced flies if I'm really thinking the market's going to go down. There's other things we can do that are even better, like put diagonals, and we'll be getting into all that also. So I want to show you one other aspect of this. So I talked, to, I just touched on my all put flat fly, which you'll be learning a lot about if you join my room here. Uh, I do those 35 days and more out here on a Friday. So I, if I can't, you know, get 35, I'm going to pick the closest thing to 35 on a Friday I can find, which in this case, I'm still trying to get there. Sometimes this scroll feature can be very irritating. Here it is. So March 22nd, that's a Friday. We're 39 days out. That's perfectly fine. I've done a lot of these in the fifties, but this is fine. And why you would do that? Another thing we can dial in. I can't. I can't do everything. I uh, can't teach everything I know in one day, can I? We'll get there. Um, so, um, the all put could be out here. So we could just let's just make this the twenty second of March. And now I'm out here even further. And uh, let's go to risk profile. What do I get for that? Well, it's, it's usually a little cheaper trade. And you're usually down a little less on the edges. If you put this on, you, and tomorrow morning we go down 100, well, you're down about 180 bucks per contract. A lot of trades, if we went down 100 points, you know what would happen. You'd be uh, really hurting bad. Hopefully not in a large trade where you're looking for a window you might toss yourself out of. But I mean, that's that's the beauty of something further up, is that it's going to be flatter early on. Because the further out in time you go, of course, the slower our theta is. But any positive theta trade, the butterfly, the calendar, when you first start it, you don't have any money, right? You have two nickels to rub together because you haven't had time to for it to decay and make you some money, may get you some profit. But as time goes on, you know, if we if we look at this, you know, a week later or something like that, you can say, hey, I got some profit now. Things aren't so bad on the edges. But when you first start out, that's when you're most vulnerable to market movement. Mark, the community enjoys the trading in zero DTA. Well, Eric, I know that um, 
they do that over at Tom's. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you. That's not my thing. Uh, if, if you like doing zero days to expiration, I know I think Tom's doing one of those courses right now. Yeah, James, I'm, I'm sure not all the community likes that, but I'll be, I'll, I'll be straight up with you. I don't do that. Uh, um, not my thing. So most of my trades will probably be anywhere from four to five days from expiration to uh, 50, 60, or a lot of 30 and 40 days to expiration, primarily with the calendars a week or so. Now I want to talk touch on that real quick. You know, sometimes people go, Mark, are you crazy? 39 days. I don't want to go all the way out there. How long am I going to be in this? Well, I can tell you how long you're going to be in it. And, and the all put flat fly, and I have my own records, a lot of my students' records, and I know some of them are in the room from the other place that have came over here with me. Um, it's eight to 10 days on average, even if you had to repair it and add a complex or something, eight to 10 days. So if you put this on today, most of the time, probably 70, 80% of the time, you'd be out of it by next early next week at eight or 10%. And uh, I just think that's realistic. In fact, if you think about it, it how many investments do you know where you're or, or, or even vehicles, whatever you could put in where you could make kind of repeatedly and reliably eight to 10% in a week. There aren't many of those, are there? You know, I, I've told people before, you can go on down the road and find whatever other investment you're looking at that pays eight or 10% a week. There aren't many. And what I like about this is not only does it do that, it also is a little safer. You do zero days to expiration, uh, you know, if it moves big, you can be in real trouble. You know, have one of those, say you had it on an SPX, you know, it was a week or two ago, we went, you know, 60 points, we just take off. That can be painful. Uh, that's why I like to do these. I have a little more time for them to work. It's a more conservative way to uh, do things. Uh, you know, short-term trades uh, that are day, I'm not, I don't mean this in a, um, uh, I'm not trying to be insulting, but I'm just kind of stating kind of a way to look at it. Zero data expiration or short-term trades are sort of what I, I call like the crack cocaine of trading. Crack cocaine works very quickly for you. And those trades can be very quickly profitable, but it also can go against you very quickly. And that's what shorter term trades do. I like to myself be a little more conservative and I'll have a lot more conservative approach. Uh, you know, uh, many people who do the style of trading or trying to build for their future, or maybe you're retired and you want to be safer. Well, I'll submit to you, you wouldn't want to take a lot of your retirement and put it in zero days to expiration. I'm not saying you couldn't do some of that. Of course, there's always right. some money you can put into. Um, sorry about my bulldog barking back there. Uh, there's, um, there's, there's just a lot of risks there that I care not to tell. So primarily I'll be teaching you things that are a little, little shorter term. I mean, a little longer term than that, obviously. And a lot of times, just while we're on that topic, I'm going to be wrapping it up a little soon. Uh, I might do this calendar, and you can. You could do it for this Friday. And I'd probably still go four ways wide. Um, so what is this Friday? Is it the 20th? I'm not losing my mind. Damn it. What is this Friday? I don't think it is. Sorry, folks. I got a lot. I mean, this is my first time in this room. Oh, it's the 16th. Okay. So you could do it for this Friday also, 16th. Or I'd be selling the 16th. Sorry. Let me get this right. And then buying the 20th. And you could do that. Now, what do you get for that? Well, obviously, you're going to get faster time decay. And it's a little more dangerous on the edges. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, yeah, I'll cover the stop loss. And then I, I'm going to take whatever final questions you have and probably wrap it up here because I'm going to go over these trades in depth at the Traders Lounge also. Andrew says, any stop loss or exit criteria for these calendar fly trades? What I do with these myself, if if it's not, uh, say, uh, more than a into Tuesday of expiration week, let's say I put this on. If I somehow, you know, if I get into next Tuesday, I will adjust the trade if I'm around here. Uh, you say, well, Mark, what if you're down 15%? Well, here's the thing. Uh, a lot of people like to use that as a criteria. My profit goes 10%. And if I'm down 15, I get out. Well, in a calendar, even a fly, you can be down 10 or 15% and be dead center here. I'm not getting out of that trade. Not whenever I'm well within my graph. Just because I'm down a percentage, I'm not doing it. I'll give it time to work. 
Um, now, if it gets late into expiration week, say it's Wednesday of expiration week, we're expiring here in two days. No, you you don't want to add complexes in something that's about to expire. Uh, but between now and Tuesday of next week, if I had on a trade for next Friday, I would adjust it if I needed to. Here, today or tomorrow, if I put this on today and I needed to add a complex tomorrow, I'd do it. If it was Wednesday, I'd probably just take it off if it blew out or down or up. So that would be my general plan for that. But no, there isn't a percentage in these flies, calendars, diagonals. There isn't a percentage up or down I use because you could be well within your graph and be down that percentage. And I don't want to get out. I'll just give you a story of one. This could happen here. Uh, one time. Oh, I think I don't even remember. It was a few years ago. And uh, the Fed announcement was really, really hyped up what they were going to do. And I was in this calendar, dead center. And what, what can happen when you're in a calendar, say, during Fed announcement week, if you're in a calendar that expires that Friday with the Fed announcements on a Wednesday, if you that Friday's out, volatility will be held up. So you'll be like you're not getting time decay because the, the thing you sold is holding its value so well because of the volatility, you're not getting your profit. And once that Fed announcement comes out, you'll see that drop and you'll go, oh, wait a minute, hey, look, I'm, I'm making money here this afternoon. And that's what happens often with Fed announcements or news events like that. So uh, what happened was I, was I had a calendar on a lot of contracts. On a Monday of, of that week, I was dead centered down $7,000. And Tuesday, same. Wednesday, it was really the market wasn't moving, but the tension was high. We got into Wednesday and uh, expiration, I mean, expiration's on Friday. Now it's coming out on, on uh, at one o'clock that Wednesday afternoon. I'm still down this boatload. 30 minutes after the announcement, one thirty central after it came out at one, I was up $7,000. And that's the kind of thing that can happen. But I stayed on my course. Now it's rare to have that profound of a thing, but it just it gives a very graphic example. I don't want to get out of something when I'm really in a good spot in the graph, anywhere in the center area, just because I'm down a percentage. All right. So let me take MB's question here. So, and then I'm probably going to move on here. I'll be back at one. So is the adjustment plan to add a calendar higher and then look at two calendars as a single trade after your adjustment? Are you still going for 10% or going for break even? I'm going to still go for a 10% profit if I, if I add a double calendar say another calendar to it. Sometimes we add flies. Like I said, a whole lot to teach you here and when I do what. But if you had a calendar on and you added a calendar, and let's say this one costs you $350 and the new one costs you $350, now I got $7. All right, I want 10% of what I have in the trade. So that would be 10% of the seven. But if you said, hey, Mark, I've already had trouble with this trade. I adjusted it. What about a 5% profit? I don't have a problem with that. You know, if you have to adjust the trade and you want to lower your profit goal, that's probably a good idea. I don't have a problem with it. Mark, what should be the capital allocation for a position sizing for this type of trade? Well, first off, let me say this. Before you do any trade, you need to know when and how you're getting in, why you're getting in, how you're managing it, adjustments, everything inside and out, and what your profit goals are. So you need to have a full plan and some experience. And the more experience you get, the more times you're successful, you just go up in contract size. A lot of times I'll start people out here with a one lot. Hey, the first couple of these work. Can I go to two? Sure. Go to two lots. They keep working, go to four lots. And you just work your way up. Just because you, you come into uh, this and you go, hey, I got a hundred grand sitting here, but I've never done a calendar. Well, that doesn't mean you'd want to put on a huge calendar, right? We'd still, we should start out small and work our way up. Uh, but to me, uh, what I do is I usually do two or three of these trades no more at a time, like I might have a calendar here, a fly here, maybe another calendar, another expiration. I don't like to have more than three trades on usually. I just make them bigger and bigger and bigger. And the reason I only want to have two or three is if you do have the market go haywire and you have to do something, now you only have three to worry about. If you had $100,000 and you had three trades that total $100,000, that's going to be easier for you if you have to fix it than if the market goes haywire and you got 10 trades that total your $100,000. So that's why I like to do very few of these. So if you were up and running and knew what you were doing with these and you said, hey, Mark, uh, I've got, you know, 20 grand I want to put into these and I know what I'm doing. 
Well, I, I would, if you knew you were going to do two or three, I'd probably maybe start one at eight or 10,000 and then maybe another one and then one more, that type of thing, or 6,000 a piece. That's how I would do it. Once you're up and running and you're very, very confident in what you're doing. But let's not put that kind of money out there before we're solid on what we're doing. All right, folks. Now, I know this was a little little um, kind of off kilter here today. It was my first day over here with you guys. A little different format for me. Um, and uh, But uh, it'll get smoothed out. We'll get better. Uh, you come to my Traders Lounge this afternoon. We'll actually, we'll look at live trades. We'll talk about those. And I'll dial in more even on adjustments. And uh, I may be a little lighter on adjustments and what I obviously on what I'm doing and all that descriptive until next week, whenever we get people coming in here um, that are, that are paid, then I'll get more into the nuts and bolts of things. Um, so anyway, uh, do you ever factor in news cycle? Yeah. I mean, I, it's something to be aware of uh, that I say, Hey, there's a CPI next Tuesday. Uh, if I had on this trade for next Friday, that's something to be aware of. Yes. Doesn't mean I wouldn't do the trade. There are certain things I go, you know, I might not even do this trade. Uh, I'll say a presidential election. I probably wouldn't do a trade the day before that because you know how much those can move things around. Uh, thank you, John. All right. Well, folks, I'm going to be back at one o'clock today. Um, if you look here in the um, in the chat, you can see my email. I'm going to I'll put it in here again in case you can't go up and find it so easy. Hang on here, I'll get it done. Uh, you can email me if you have more questions, um, or you can also, there's my email. And uh, if you weren't here earlier, I do have a YouTube channel. Uh, now that's going to be, obviously, if you're on my YouTube, you are not going to uh, you know, learn all the adjustments and everything. I'm gonna be doing that over here. Uh, really dialing it in more next week. Uh, but I'll show you a few today just to give you a taste and this week. So um, there's my YouTube channel. If you guys want to go over and look at some of my stuff there, you can see what my ugly mug looks like uh, on those. And uh, I'll do a couple of those a week, kind of talk about my sentiment in things. Uh, but the real trading, the real learning, the real teaching, I'll be doing here at Aramar with these opening bells and with the traders lounges and then i'm going to add like i said a trade alert service and all that type of thing okay well i'm so glad you guys are all here today i really appreciate your attention and showing up and uh i hope most of you decide to go along on the trading journey with me as i said at the top next week you'll have to be paid to be here uh and i'm starting out with a really nice introductory rate it's 50 bucks a month if you sign up by the end of the month uh, you can also pay 500 for the year if you sign up by the end of the month. After March 1st and beyond, it'll be 75 a month if you sign up. So, uh, and the first six months are 50. After six months, if you're doing 50 months, it is going to 75. And if you're doing yearly, it would go 750. But um, so, but you get, this is a, I think I've looked around at the cost of a lot of other ones. I don't think you're going to find uh, this level of content very often at that price. And I think it's well worth it, well worth it. If you think about 50 bucks a month, uh, well, you know, if you're not if you're not learning enough to have that and, and earning enough for your trading to pay for that, there's probably a problem, right? Uh, or it's not very much money in the scheme of things if you're really trying to make money, right? Anyway, a little bit about that. But I will be um, back at one o'clock central today. We'll have a trader's lounge, still free, free all this week. Glad you guys are here. Have a great one. Oh, maybe I'm not a profitable trader. Will this give me a fighting chance? Absolutely. I've taken people who were doing very poorly and rehabilitated them because a lot of trading is about learning fear, uh, managing fear and greed. Um, so I can help you with that. Uh, but you do have to ultimately overcome that yourself. If you can't do it, then maybe trading's not for you. Uh, but I can show you some mechanics to do that, some ways of managing your trading to do that. You'd have a real fighting chance of doing that uh, than you would say if you just ran around on YouTube and did every trade you saw on there. A lot of those trades aren't fully developed, meaning that they're not showing you everything, just like I said, I don't on my YouTube. If you just throw something on 
you see anybody doing YouTube without knowing everything else about it, that can get you in trouble if you do that a lot, particularly if you're not experienced at all. You know? All right. Good questions today, folks. I really enjoyed this. So have a good one. I'll be back at one. Bye-bye.